Well, here's the interesting thing. People who eat animal products have the same rate of clinical B12 deficiency problems as vegans and vegetarians. How is that possible? On it. You know, first of all, as a vegan or a vegetarian, someone's probably told you you have to take B12 supplements. Okay? And a lot of people think this is a real issue. And it could be, but it's not necessarily because of your diet. Animal products contain tons of B12. It's because B12 is manufactured by bacteria and living organisms like us, as I think I've said to this group before, again, I apologize, you know, that those of you that got here just four or five days ago didn't hear everything I've said so far, and I don't remember who's heard what, but um, it's estimated that we have 10 to 20 times more bacteria in our bodies than our own human cells. So we are essentially walking bacteria buses. You're just moving bacteria from place to place. Okay. You know, if, if majority rules, the bacteria would be running the show, not you. And um, so animal products, like us, contain tons of bacteria. And these bacteria aren't harmful. We actually have a symbiotic relationship with them, which means we provide them with something they need. In this case, with bacteria, what is it? What are we giving them? Okay, food and shelter, room and board, in exchange for cleaning up the garbage. Okay, and what they do is they actually consume dead and dying tissue. So they're helping us to eliminate tissue we want to get rid of. It's a good thing they're there. We'd have a lot of trouble without them. We could not survive without these bacteria. So if bacteria, manuf not, not all bacteria manufacture B12, but given the fact that we've got, I don't even know what it is. I mean, if we have trillions of cells, well, tens of trillions of bacteria, okay? Lots of them. It would take you a long time if you had to count them all. And if you had to remember all their names, forget about it. Um, but there's enough bacteria in the body that they're manufacturing all the B12 we need probably three or four times per day at least. Okay, three or four times more B12 than we need is being manufactured in the body every day. Now, what's interesting is that people eating animal products, meat, dairy products, theoretically should be getting tons of bacteria, tons of B12, because there's tons of bacteria. They are, in fact, consuming tons of B12. But here's what's interesting. Now, you know, most people will tell you vegans and vegetarians have low serum B12. What does that mean, low serum B12? It means we have, we have relatively little B12 circulating in our bloodstream. That's what it means. Okay? Serum in the bloodstream. Low serum B12. Now, relative to what or whom? The rest of the population. People eating animal products have a lot more B12 circulating in the bloodstream. Well, duh. I mean, if they're eating stuff that contains you know, tons of it, and we're eating stuff that contains little, if any, they should have a lot more circulating in their bloodstream. Does that make sense? Now, I happen to believe that most schools today are crap, and children would be better off playing hooky all the time. They'd probably learn more useful stuff playing in trees, you know, and then, then going to school. But let's say that you believe children should be in school. So how are we going to measure whether children are getting to school or not? I have an idea. Let's count the number of children on school buses. The bloodstream is the transportation system that allows the body to move things to the cells. Do we want stuff on the transportation system? Or we want them in the cells. We need them in the cells. In the same way that we want children in schools, not on school buses. If we count all the children in school buses, does that, does that tell us how many children get to school? Maybe they climb out the window before they get there. Maybe when, the, maybe when the bus pulls up to the school, half the kids go off into the woods and smoke pot. 
<laughs> okay, I've been there. Um, you know, maybe, maybe the school bus is hijacked and those children never get to school at all. Maybe there's an accident. Who knows, right? Counting children on school buses is an ineffective way to estimate how many children are actually getting to school. In the same way that counting B12 in the bloodstream is an ineffective way to determine how much B12 is actually getting to our cells and being used. Because getting children to school, is that good enough? Not if they're not studying. Not if they're not paying attention. Getting them to school may not be enough. Okay? Getting the B12 to our cells may not be enough if the body can't use it properly. That's what we really want to know. Now, so... Vegans and vegetarians have low serum B12. We have less B12 in our bloodstream than people who eat animal products. Remember? Duh. Okay? Don't forget that. Duh. Um, but what's important is, is the B12 actually being used properly? So here's the interesting thing. People who eat animal products have the same rate of clinical B12 deficiency problems as vegans and vegetarians. How is that possible? How could it be that these people who are consuming, you know, a thousand times more, maybe, than a vegan or vegetarian, have the same clinical B12 deficiency problems? What does this mean? What's a clinical deficiency problem? It doesn't mean, it means not just counting how much is in the bloodstream, but actually looking at actual problems created as a result. Here's an easy example to understand. We know that we need vitamin C because our bodies can't make it. We have to eat it. If we don't eat it for four to six weeks, what do we get? Scurvy. Okay, we get scurvy if we don't eat it. So if we simply looked at how much vitamin C someone was consuming, would that tell us how much vitamin C people were actually getting? No. It, it's all about assimilation. Okay? It's entirely possible that one person is consuming you know, 10 times what they're supposed to need, but still is deficient. In the same way that Terry, my client from four or so years ago, came in with a, with a clinical magnesium deficiency, even though she lived on fruit and salad. She was eating tons of magnesium, but her body wasn't able to get it to the cells and, after, and needed supplements to, to get what she needed. After fasting, perfectly fine, eating fruit and salad, same diet she was eating before. Now her body's actually accessing and properly using the stuff. So in the same way, the fact that these people are consuming tons of B12 means nothing because their much more toxic, much more poorly functioning systems are unable to properly use, use the stuff. Okay.